septum factor. Competing in tonight's heat. Bob Davison, a farmer from Whitley Bay, Tyne and Weir. Stephen Weir, a sales manager from Ascot. Di Biggs, a milk recorder from Ashbourne in Derbyshire. And Lawrence Parsons, a computer systems analyst from Portsmouth. Welcome to the Krypton Factor and our exacting but entertaining test of mental and physical ability. Tonight is the last heat in Group A and at the end of our six rounds we will know the full lineup for next week's Group Final. The winner of this third heat automatically goes through, so too will the runner-up if his or her score is higher than 36 points. Every incentive then for our contestants. Let's get them started with Round 1, Mental Agility. And tonight's test involves forward thinking. I will give each contestant a series of numbers, letters of the alphabet, days of the week, or months. The contestant's task is to give me back the number, letter, day, or month that is too forward of the one I give. For example, 6, 21, 11 would become 8, 23, 13. And October, G, Thursday, 5 would be converted to December, I, Saturday, seven. That's the test. Now let's welcome the contestant who will tackle it first. From Whitley Bay in Tyne and Weir, farmer Bob Davison. <laughs> right, Bob, remember this is a speed test. You must answer as many questions as you can in 40 seconds. Are you ready to start? As ready as we'll ever be. <laughs> right, well, the clock is going to start now. 4, 13, 9. 6, 15, 11. November, July, April. January, September, June. V L H. X N J. Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Wednesday, Saturday, Monday. 20, Tuesday, June. 22, Thursday, August. S F I O. U H. K, N. Wrong. Sorry. 24, well, no need to go on with that. Uh, in 40 seconds, you've scored five, which is very good. Well done, Bob. Would you now like to take your seat? Yeah. Our second contestant is the sales manager from Ascot, Stephen Weir. <laughs> Welcome to you, Stephen. Are you all set? I am. Right. 40 seconds then, beginning now. 5, 14, 10. 7, 16, 12. December, August, May. February, October, July. X, O, J. Z, R, L. Wrong. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday. 21, Wednesday, July. 23, Friday, September. T, G, J, P. Pass. 25, S, October, Friday. 27, U, December, Sunday. 13, May, 39, Thursday. 15, July, 41, Saturday. March, right, that's it, 40 seconds up, and in that time you have scored six. Very well done, Stephen. Would you now take your seat? Thank you. Our next contestant is the milk recorder from Ashbourne, Derbyshire, Di Biggs. Right, very tense moment, Di, but are you ready to start? Yes, Gordon. Right, 40 seconds begin. Now, 6, 15, 11. 8, 17, 13. January, September, June. March, November, July. Wrong. A, P, K. C, R, M. Wednesday, Saturday, Monday. Friday, Monday, Wednesday. 22, Thursday, August. 24, Saturday, October. U H K Q. W J N S. 
26T, November, Saturday. Don't need to answer that one. It would have been 28V, January, Monday, but in 40 seconds you've scored five. Well done. Take your seat, please. And finally, let's welcome our fourth contestant from Portsmouth, computer systems analyst, Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Lawrence, good luck to you. Are you ready to start? Yes. Right, your 40 seconds begin now. 7, 16, 12. 9, 18, 14. February, October, July. April, December, September. B, Q, L. D, S, N. Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday. Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. 23, Friday, September. 25, Sunday, November. V, I, L, R. X, K, pass, next. 27U, December, Sunday. 29W, February, Tuesday. 15 July, don't need to go on with that one. 40 seconds are up and you have scored six. Well done, Lawrence. Take a seat, please. Well, such a tough start to any contest, but they cope with it so well. And as far as the scoring's concerned, where two or more contestants have the same number of correct answers, their placings will be determined by the clock. And with the usual scoring system of 10 points, 6, 4 and 2 for first, second, third and fourth, let's go now to the scoreboard. And there's how it worked out. In fourth place, Di. Third is Bob, who reached his total faster than Di. Second, Stephen. And first, Lawrence, who was quicker to his total than Stephen. So the early leader with a Krypton factor of 10 is the computer systems analyst from Portsmouth, Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Round two challenges the contestants to land a Boeing 737 jet. They attempted in British Midlands 10 million pounds state-of-the-art rediffusion simulator at Colville, Leicestershire. Guided by the instruments, they must land at San Francisco Airport under the watchful eye of Captain Roger Wise, the judge for this round. Bob Davison is first to attempt it. Directly ahead is the San Francisco runway. And as always, keep your eye on that flight director inset bottom right. We're dropping now to 260 feet. The vertical bar represents line of approach and the horizontal bar angle of descent. But Bob hasn't followed it very accurately. He's missed the runway, but does land safely on the grass, so at least the passengers escaped unhurt, and Bob too, of course. Now it's Stephen Weir, fairly accurate so far, but that vertical bar just moving left of centre, so he should steer very slightly left on the control column. And now the horizontal line drifts up and he must pull back gently on the column until those L-shaped bars representing the wings move up to it. And he's done that very nicely and it brings him in right over the centre line of the runway. And that's a nice touchdown. So that's a splendid performance by Stephen Weir. He's proud of that one. Now Di Biggs. And note how those eyes go straight down to the flight director dial in front of her where the bars will guide her. Horizontal bar drops, so it's pushed forward on the control column to get the L-shaped bars on top of the horizontal line. And the vertical line saying bank right a bit. And you can see why, looking out of the window, we're just to the left of the runway, needs to lift the nose a touch, and that's nicely done, landing just at the side of the runway. So a pretty good attempt from Dybix. And finally, Lawrence Parsons, unlike all the other contestants, he'll have received instruction from Captain Wise and then had a couple of practice attempts to get the feel of the aircraft. But now he can't receive any help at all, and by the look of it, he doesn't need it. It's a good approach, just drifting right of the runway and trying hard to correct it, but only the smallest input should be made at this critical stage. And he gets it down on the runway, but careers across, pushes the right rudder down to straighten up, and he coped with that pretty well. Now for the result, Captain Roger Wise scored it like this. In fourth place, Bob Davison. He flew accurately at first, then lost direction and landed to the left of the runway two points. Third, Di Biggs, a good approach and descent until near the end when she came in steeply to land on the grass, four points. Second, Lawrence Parsons. The graphs tell the story, good approach work, but made an angle landing on the runway, six points. And the winner, Stephen Weir. He made a superb approach and descent to land right on the centre line of the runway. A brilliant performance, 10 points. And now to the scoreboard, where we have a tie for first place with Krypton factors of 16. It's the sales manager from Ascot, Stephen Weir. And still there, Portsmouth's Lawrence Parsons. <laughs>
Well, a very good contest developing as we go into round three, which tests your ability to absorb visual and verbal information. It's one for everyone at home to play, regardless of age. Coming up, part three of our thriller, Where Is Don Day? Produced specially for this programme and starring Tony Robinson and Michelle Collins. Afterwards, questions about what you saw and heard with multi-choice answers. All right, contestants, would you turn now, please, to your screens for the continuing adventures of our innocent bank manager turned bank robber. If I'd had any idea when I got up what that day was going to be like, I'd probably have stayed in bed. Bank robberies, car crashes, and then being chased by gangsters. They are the famous Bellini brothers. They used to have a knife act in the circus. I was the target. But they never... No, never missed. The money's our only hope. Oh, I've got to get it back to the bank. Oh, no, you can't do that. Enzo will slit my throat. What? Please, look, say you look after money too, you know I'm safe. Go on, please. Right, now, maybe Peach's nightclub for 12 o'clock. Slow down a bit. <laughs> Martin, Martin! Oh, thank God you're here, Enzo. They tried to kill me. Who did? All oh, that gang from London that got the money. Be careful, Enzo. They're vicious. Oh, Martin, baby. We can be vicious, too. We'll get the money back. Don't worry. So you're caught up with this London gang, eh, Marcy? OK, tough guy. It's no good shooting me. You'd never get your money back then, would you? Quick thinking, Marcy! I can't believe Enzo didn't shoot you! Well, you told me yourself you took the bullets out before the robbery. Yeah, but I put them back this morning. Fortune favours the brave, but will Don's luck last? Find out in next week's gripping instalment of Where Is Don Day? Now to find out whether our contestants and you at home have been looking and listening carefully, coming up six questions with multi-choice answers. Contestants, would you pick up your keypads, please? You have five seconds to answer each question using your keypads to select from four possible answers. Question one. When did Marcy tell Don to meet her at Peach's nightclub? Time is up, and the answer is C, 12 o'clock. Question two. What time was displayed on the post office clock? Time's up. The answer, again, was C, 11.32. Question three. How did Enzo Fellini address Don? The answer to that, B, tough guy. Now question four. How many stamps were there on the parcel? That's it. The answer, C, there were three. Now question five. What words of congratulations did Don give Marcy as the car rolled away? And the answer is D, quick thinking, Marcy. Finally, question six. What did the poster on the door of the club advertise? And you should have voted C, live music. And straight away, through the wonders of computer technology, the results come to hand, and here they are. Stephen, you got just the one right and finished fourth, two points. Di, you got three right and are third, four points. Lawrence, you also got three right, but in a faster time than Di, so that's second place and six points. And Bob, five right for you, so you win the round, ten points. And straight away, let's enter all those points into the scoreboard and see how that affects the overall situation. 
And there we are at the end of the third round. Now clear in the lead with a Krypton factor of 22. Portsmouth's Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Colonel Terry McCarty starts the assault course race. Di Big sets off first. And she's not only a recorder for the milk marketing board, she is also a milkman. Or should I say milk woman? She actually delivers pints to the doors and carries crates around, which she believes makes her pretty fit. She has high hopes of doing well on this assault course. It's quite a stiff breeze blowing across it, though, which makes balance along that slalom very difficult. Here go the three men nearest to us in red, Bob Davison. In the centre in green, Stephen Weir. And on the far side in blue, Lawrence Parsons. And Bob, nearest to us in red, he's a farmer. Farms on the family farm, a thousand acres of it at Whitley Bay. And he's also a rugby player. He's in the back row for Percy Park. And he's in second place at the moment, but only just from Stephen Weir in green. And right beside Stephen is Lawrence Parsons. So they're really acting as pacemakers for each other as they try and close the gap on Di. And it's important here for Di that she doesn't make any mistakes. And just as I say it, she misses her footing there. But she needs to be accurate all the way down the course. And these three men, they're not moving that quickly. They are narrowing the gap slightly, but they're not moving that quickly. So Di has real chances if she's got the stamina and she makes a faultless run down this course. Time will tell. It's Bob Davison in second place, and Stephen there makes a mistake there, and he's all over the place trying to find his footing. That won't help him at all. And Di Biggs going down that S-bend very nicely indeed. And that's, of course, an advantage for her with her size. It'll be much more difficult for the men when they get to that S-bend. So in second place, it's still Bob Davison. It's Stephen and Lawrence doing pretty well on the far side, but uh, Bob here is six foot and twelve and a half stone, so this is a much more difficult obstacle for him. And he's taking his time over that. And Lawrence on the far side's come through well. He coped with that very nicely indeed, and I think he's about to snatch second place as Bob Davison makes a mistake there. So Lawrence is into second place from Bob, with Stephen not that far behind in third place. And now they've got their target in sight. Die coming down the other side of the A-frame, but of course it's more difficult to go up, so she's got the advantage now as she heads on now towards the stepping stones and the water. Lawrence in second place on the far side has had special preparation for this race from the local bodywork gym in Waterlooville where he lives and I think it's beginning to pay dividends now because he's definitely increasing his pace and he is closing on Di Biggs. Now what has Di got left as she goes up to that Burma rope bridge and still increasing the power is Lawrence Parsons and closing with every stride. Can Di hang on here? Takes big strides across the Burma rope bridge. Bob Davison still in third place and soaked to the skin. Di about to begin a descent. There's Bob Davison. He's not that far behind them either. Any mistake here could let him back in. But Di, this is going to be so important for her. How she lands in the water at the bottom, also for Lawrence. So let's watch these techniques as she pulls her feet up and does that quite nicely, but then has to take a couple of steps backwards, which won't help her. And Lawrence splashes down and lands on his feet. So it's going to be very close to the finish now. And right there too is Bob Davison. But Di holding on to her lead as she goes into the last obstacle. It's going to be very difficult for her in there. It's all uphill and you've got to go over hurdles of different heights and storming through the far side is Lawrence Parsons. And Lawrence snatches victory right on the line. Ten points to Lawrence. Great finish by Lawrence Parsons. And here's the man who's going to finish third. This is Bob Davison. Good steady run by him. He's not that far behind either. And he picks up four points for third place. And that leaves Stephen Weir to finish fourth. He's only a few seconds further behind. He gets two points, but it has been a really close race all the way down the course, and the usual sportsmanship right at the end of it from Krypton contestants. As we now go to the scoreboard, and with four runs gone, there's the situation. Two contestants sharing second place on 20, Bob and Stephen, but the leader with a Krypton factor of 32, Portsmouth's Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Well, he really is going very well. Two rounds to go, but so often, this is the round where things can change dramatically. Coming up is a test of logic, spatial awareness, and nerve. Contestants, would you now take your places, please? And in front of each of them are eight small cubes with their faces in six different colors. The contestants must put these small cubes together to form one larger cube, which has only one single color on each of its six faces. Are you all ready, contestants? The test starts now. Well, this is a particularly tough one. 
contestants are really going to have to stay cool, calm and collected throughout. You perhaps understand the scale of the problem when you realise that not only are there these eight cubes, but whichever one you choose to start with, there are eight different ways you can place it in the cradle. But clearly the first thing to do is to decide on the colours of three faces, and if you then select the right blocks, the other faces should be more straightforward to assemble. It's difficult to say who's doing well at this point because you can appear to be correct right up to the last block and then discover it won't match up. So you've got to go back and switch a few cubes around. Lawrence Parsons, the overall leader so far. Di, thinking hard. She's in fourth place overall, but ten points here would put her right back in contention. Bob Davidson. Now that block he's just put in is okay for red and blue, but not for yellow. That's infuriating for him. Stephen, joint second, would love 10 points here. And has he got them? He's checking it round, all the way round. He's done it, yes. A splendid performance by Stephen Weir. And that's going to worry Lawrence, as especially as I don't think he's going to make second place either. It could be Di Biggs. It all depends on that last cube. Is it right? It certainly is. Second place and six points. Well done, Di. And right behind her, Bob Davison finishing third, four points. Well, I said going into the round that things could change dramatically in that one, and that's really what happened, and congratulations to Stephen on winning it. But let's go to the scoreboard to see how it's affected the overall situation. And in fact, Stephen there is now just four points behind the leader, who, with a Krypton factor of 34, is still Portsmouth's Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Well, it really is going to be a very hard-fought last round, and at the end of it, the winner will have booked his or her place in next week's Group A final. The runner-up will be there too if he or she can better the 36 points registered by Peter Chilcott in Heat 1. So everything to play for as we go into 90 seconds of rapid-fire general knowledge questions to be answered on the buzzer. Two points for a correct answer, two points deducted for a wrong one. Are you ready on the buzzer's contestants? The clock starts now. In Scotland, Candlemas, Whitson, Martinmas and Lammas are known collectively as what days? Bob? Four quarter days. Correct. In England, which unit of weight is half a quarter or 14 pounds? <coughs> Die. Stone. Correct. Which branch of mathematics named after a pebble may be differential or integral? Answer is calculus. The calcaneus and metatarsal bones are in which part of your body? <coughs> Die. The foot. Correct. In My Left Foot, who won an Oscar playing Christy Brown? Answer is Daniel Day-Lewis. Before Cecil Day-Lewis, who was Poet Laureate and wrote Cargoes and Sea Fever? <coughs> Stephen. John Batchman. No, John Macefield. In which county are Macclesfield, Nutsford and Crewe? <coughs> Stephen. Cheshire. Correct. As the Cheshire Cat vanished slowly in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which part of it was last to go? Lawrence. The Grin. Correct. George Smiley was created by which writer in books like Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy? Bob. John le Carré. Correct. Cariocas are citizens of which Brazilian city whose name means River of January? Stephen. Rio de Janeiro. Correct. Who was born in January 1756 in Salzburg and composed the Magic Flute? Die. Mozart. Correct. Mozambique, Angola, Goa and Macau were all colonies of which European... Stephen. Portugal. Correct. Which play begins under the portico of a Covent Garden church where Professor Higgins meets Eliza Doolittle? <coughs> and you can answer, Bob. My Fair Lady. Is wrong. That's the musical. Ah, Pygmalion is the play. You lose two points. But at the end of the round and the end of the contest, the winner by just two points for the Krypton Factor of 36, the computer systems analyst from Portsmouth, Lawrence Parsons. <laughs> Well, a really close finish, but our warmest congratulations go to Lawrence Parsons on that splendid victory he led from the very beginning. And, of course, we now know the four successful contestants who will battle it out in next week's Group A final. And this is the lineup: The Heat 1 winner, Belfast's Mark Stein. The Heat 2 winner, Jeff Priest from Southampton. Tonight's Heat 3 winner, Lawrence Parsons. And Gosport's Peter Chilcott from Heat 1 takes the place for the highest scoring runner-up. It should be a tremendous battle, so don't miss the Group A final next Monday night at 7 o'clock. Until then, from all our contestants here, and from me, good night.